All right. I want to greet you all this morning in the precious name of Jesus. back together with you all again today. Blessing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We just ask your blessing upon us this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to be together. Thank you for your word, Lord. We just ask that you would fill us with your spirit and give us wisdom. Help us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. I want to read uh, this verse here it says now faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen for by it the men of old gained approval and I want to remember the verse that's in the uh, King James Version of how it is it says now faith is the hope or is the evidence of things not seen well wait a minute now faith is How's it go? King James. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I just thought about that. I've heard that a lot of times uh, talked about. And we've talked about it quite a bit. But I, my thought was the evidence of things not seen. And what I want to do this morning is just talk about the evidence of things not seen and what that evidence is. You know, oftentimes I've talked and told about that one of the reasons that we can be assured that there is good, a God, is besides just knowing that this just didn't pop out of anywhere, is that there is good and evil. And one of the things that we can see that we can see evil all around us and people choose that evil and we see some examples sometimes of people choosing good and that is evidence to me that there is much more there is things that we cannot see there's evidence of that goodness and a good God all around us just by how we have the ability to make that choice for good. That's evidence. The, the uh, opportunity that we have to make a choice for good is evidence that there is a God evidence that there is something that we can't see. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Whenever we think of salvation, you know, there's a lot of people that believe that just because Jesus died and rose again that they're going to be saved. But we believe that the atonement was more than just God having the learning or pre gaining the ability to forgive us because Jesus died, but that we could be actually set free. We believe that when Jesus died, that one of the songs we sang, it talked about Jesus dying so that we could be forgiven. That's not why Jesus died. God is who God is throughout all eternity. And when we look in the Old Testament, and there was many times that God forgave the people of Israel. 
not because someone had to, something had to suffer so that his anger could be appeased. He had the ability just to forgive. But man, having yielded himself to the power of Satan, was under Satan's control and under his power. That's why Jesus died, so that we could be set free from the bondage of Satan. We read in the Gospels where Jesus was talking to the children of Israel. They were in bondage under the Romans, and, and they were looking for a Messiah to actually deliver them from the bondage of being in a, of slavery and being under the Roman rule. But we know that Jesus came not just to set them free in a physical sense of the government, but he came to set them free and he told the people that they could be free and free indeed. And what he was talking about is free from Satan's grasp and Satan's bondage and control over them. And that's what truly being in freedom means. We live in a place where our constitution, our government guarantees us the right, the freedom to be free. And that's something I think we often take for granted whenever we we had a little taste of where we see that the government steps in and tells us that we can't do something. We can't, and it's odd to us because we're normally free to do whatever we want to. And yet, most of the world is under a bondage, a government that tells them when and where to do everything they do. And yet, we've realized or we've lived under this type of freedom to where we've basically had the freedom to do whatever we, whatever we like. But yet, there's another freedom. There's a freedom that even if we were in bondage, even if we were under an oppressive, evil government, we could still be free. You know, it's, it's amazing, you know, how sometimes we get all bent out of shape when we can't do what we want. But yet, real freedom means that I can still be free and I can still have peace and I can still have the Lord and I can still have all those things no matter what anybody else is doing to me. We live on such a superficial level that the first restriction that's put upon us, we're just, oh, we just fall apart. But to be free indeed is to be above that. That it doesn't matter what man can do to us or what the world does to us, we can still be free. There's the evidence of things not seen. That is one of the ways that we can display. We can display the evidence of things not seen. We can, we talked about being a representative of God. When we are like he is, we are evidence of he who is not seen. We've, when we talk about freedom, being free, you know, someone that's been a slave and they're set free, the first thing they want to do is not go out and make someone else a slave. Someone that's been redeemed or been set free, they want to give that to other people. The evidence of someone with a heart after God is whenever they've tasted something. You know, we, we see people that are in bondage to their being a victim. You know, if someone does them wrong, they're in bondage to 
I can't wait until I have an opportunity to set things straight. Then I'll be the one over. Then I'll be the one punishing the one who has punished me. And so even though the whole circumstance might change and you might be given freedom and an opportunity to put into bondage the one that was above you, now that you're free as long as you're still wanting to put someone in bondage under you, you don't know what it is to be free indeed. Like Jesus talked about. You might have the physical freedom and the physical power to oppress someone else. But when you've been truly set free, your goal is not vengeance. Your goal is not, oh, now I'm not the victim. I'm the controller. See, there's people that are living in bondage, being a victim, just waiting for the opportunity that they can take control or that they can see someone else punished or hurt, even if they don't gain anything out of it. There's people, there's movements all over the world, people that are that are just... Promote the idea of punishing someone else so that you can supposedly feel better even though it doesn't do one thing for you. That's bondage. That's bondage. Whenever Jesus talked about being free, the evidence of someone who's actually been freed the reflection from God that someone that's actually tasted that freedom is they want to see other people freed. That's the, the, the uh, irony or the oddity of modern religion. People go out and they tell a gospel that brings people under them or brings people under their control, or brings people into the bondage of their ideas and rules. That's someone who hasn't tasted real freedom. That's never reflected the freedom that God has given to them. The true evidence is of someone who's been redeemed is they're willing and ready to redeem others. Not just to get them all in a little group, not just to, so they can be controlled or be the controller now and control other people, but to actually give someone else freedom. You know, freedom is something that a lot of people talk about, freedom. They love freedom just as long as it agrees with what I think about freedom. I just thought about it, you know, there's a lot of things people do that we don't like. I mean, there's, there's things that, that we wouldn't agree with the way people live. But freedom gives them the right to make those choices just like it gives us the right to do what's right. That's the whole thing about God and giving us a free will. You know, don't you think it grieves God whenever someone takes their free will and overshadows and oppresses other people and takes their free will away? But God gave them free will. He gives you the will the ability that if you want to go out and just be a jerk, if you want to go out and be a tyrant, you want to go out and just be mean and cruel, you can. If you want to hurt people, you can. We would just want to stop everything if, it, if we disagree with it. But God's will is that you and I have a will. 
And so we have to give people liberty. If we love liberty, it's got to go beyond just my idea of it. It's got to go beyond of what I, I think liberty ought to be. It's even liberty to people that abuse it. There's consequences. There's punishments in the world for transgressing. But you and I, who have been given freedom, if we love free will, if we love the idea of people making their own choices, we have to let them make their own choices. You know, if someone's free, whenever we talk about freedom, they talk about the way they act sometimes, and they can, they're free to be as promiscuous, they're free to be as perverse as they can be. One of the things, and so they just feel like they're free to live the lifestyles that they want to be, that they want to live. But the same thing that comes with that freedom is the ability for us to disagree with that. We've got to allow, if, if I'm going to stand on freedom to be able to do whatever I want to do, I've got to stand on freedom to let someone else criticize whatever I do. You see, there's, it's a two-edged sword, freedom. We, we usually only see the side of it that we like to see. We only cut with the side that cuts our direction. But just in reality and in honesty, there's two sides to that. Someone who's actually tasted freedom can look past someone disagreeing with them and still let them have that choice. Evidence. You know, I've thought, often thought and I've seen examples of people who've done wrong. And then you see someone who forgives them. Someone that's actually been hurt. There's actually been an offense. And someone stands up, shakes it off, and can actually forgive the person that offends them. That is evidence to me that there is a God in heaven that can forgive our offenses. Not because he's been paid off, but because it's in his nature to actually be able to forgive someone that's done him wrong. How do we know he can do that? Because we've seen individuals, we've seen people who've been wronged and taken advantage of, and we see someone just forgive. We've maybe experienced it, where someone's done us wrong, and we've been able to completely release them from what they've done to us. We've experienced that. Freedom, that evidence that there is a God in heaven that can forgive us because we have forgiven someone else. You see, the evidence of things not seen is the kingdom of God living in this world right now as evidence of a place where those things will be the normal, the common, the way things are. The evidence of things not seen is the kingdom of God, the small example of the kingdom of God in the midst of this dark world. Jesus' promise that if you forgive, you will be forgiven. The blessed of the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. 
See, that's evidence. When we can extend mercy, it's evidence that there is mercy of a greater magnitude out there somewhere that we're just displaying or reflecting. It's the evidence of things not seen. It's evidence that there is a God that can forgive. It's evidence that there is a God full of mercy. It's evidence that there is a hope of something much better beyond. And when we experience that evidence by faith, we experience the taste of that happening to ourselves and then we display it to someone else. We are the evidence of things hoped for. Not just this pie in the sky, oh, I'm just gonna be forgiven. I've got all my doctrines right. I keep all the rules. I keep all the laws. I keep all the restrictions that I'm... See, it's much bigger than that. God is not looking for robots being able to perform everything perfectly. God is looking for someone to be a reflection of himself. A reflection of things not seen. Some people's idea of holiness is just to see how strict you can live and how disciplined of life you can live and how perfect a life you can live. And have no reflection at all of God's mercy. Have no reflection at all of God's forgiveness. Have no reflection of all at all of God's freedom that we can experience. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's what pleased God. That there was a group of people throughout history and there's a group of people now and in the future, that will be the evidence of things not seen. And the Lord add his blessing.